I'm Rob Richards. As well as being a local GP, I also have the privilege of being a reader in the Chesapeake Benefice. We're going to hear today's reading from my colleague, Barney Reeve, who's also a reader. The readings are taken from Numbers chapter 11, verses 16 and 17, and verses 24 to 29. The Lord said to Moses, Bring me seventy of Israel's elders who are known to you as leaders and officials among the people. Have them come to the tent of meeting, that they may stand there with you. I will come down and speak with you there, and I will take of the Spirit that is on you and put the Spirit on them. They will help you carry the burden of the people, so that you will not have to carry it alone. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together seventy of their elders and had them stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke with them. And he took of the spirit that was on him and put the spirit on the seventy elders. When the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but did not do so again. However, two men whose name were Eldad and Medad, had remained in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but did not go to the tent. Yet the Spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. The young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Then Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' aide since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my lord, stop them. But Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Then Moses and the elders returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. When I first read the reading from Numbers that you've just heard being beautifully read, I immediately wondered what the context of the passage was, or what had just happened before. The Israelites have just been complaining to Moses, yet again, as they've only had manna to eat, and are missing all the lovely food they used to enjoy in Egypt. Moses has had enough of their grumbling, and cannot face the ongoing task of doing God's will on his own. And he asks God for helpers, to help share the burden of guiding and leading the Israelites. God hears the petition and 70 are commissioned by God to help Moses. What is the relevance of this reading to us today? I think our church leaders have the very opposite problem to that face of Moses. They are dealing with a community that largely has no time or interest in God and are sidetracked by the distractions of possessions, pleasures and the pursuit of fame. I suggest that they may feel the burden of reaching the lost is almost too much for them to do alone. As members of the church, I hope during this time of prayer, when we remember the disciples awaiting the coming of the Holy Spirit, that you will seek a fresh anointing by the Holy Spirit yourselves to reach out to the many lost souls we meet in our daily lives be it members of our family, perhaps our neighbours, or even those we work with. The harvest is ripe, but if we leave all the outreach to the clergy, it may be that the workers will be too few. We often feel tongue-tied or perhaps incompetent to share our faith, but I often remind myself that with God, all things are possible. Prayer is the best place to start. During this period of Thy Kingdom Come, we have specifically been asked to pray daily for five people that we would love to see find Jesus. As part of those prayers, it would be good to ask God to give us the opportunity to share our faith with these five people. I think it might be helpful to prepare our testimonies as to how and why we have a faith 
and this may help us be ready to share. However, we must not forget the reassurance that Jesus gave in Matthew 10, verse 19. He says, Do not worry how to respond or what to say. In that hour you will be given what to say. This is the work of the Holy Spirit within each one of us. Although this is a tremendous challenge, it is one we must seek to undertake in order to fulfill Jesus' final commission to go and make disciples of all nations. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we journey through these ten days of reflections and prayers, give us the same expectancy as the disciples had for something more whilst they awaited the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Lord, anoint us afresh with the Holy Spirit, that we may be challenged and excited to walk with you as we pray for our five brothers and sisters who do not know of your wonderful offer of salvation and eternal life with you. When we doubt ourselves, please encourage us. When we cannot hear you, give us ears sensitive to your call. And please give us wisdom as to when and how to share our stories with others. This we ask in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Thus I move and live and 